Hey, uh, how's it going, everybody? Charlie Wilson here, aka Sinister Charlie. Welcome back. Hi. Um, yeah, I generally don't do these videos. I usually watch them, uh, usually through the office blokes. Um, <clears throat> but um, yeah, I noticed they're uh, talking about not doing like reactions as much anymore. So I was like, yeah, I'll watch some of this. I know my voice did things. Um, seven words that are catching on in America. I'll let you know what these words are catching on, you you British guy. Let's go ahead and like it. Uh, but yeah, this is Lawrence from Lost in the Pond. He's pretty cool. <clears throat> I like him. Uh, but yeah, this is something. We're just doing something different. So um, let's go. Hello, I'm Lawrence, and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond, and one of those memos pertains to words. Words, words, words. Specifically, words that are widely used in one country and have started catching on in the other. In this part one of a two-part series, I'll be igniting your brains with seven British like English brains. words that have recently started infiltrating English in the United States. And I know what you're thinking. Ooh! Lawrence, are you just going to ignore the countless American words recently adopted by Brits? Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> no, that's... That would be way too many. Like, even words that I don't even use, like riz and stuff. You crazy kids with your YouTubes and your rizzes. Coming in part two. So if you'd like to get <laughs> oh, notified no. of that video and haven't had a chance to subscribe, do that now. But in piecing together this video, I took to social media to ask my American viewers to name the one British word they use the most from the... Uh, I'm trying to think what I use. Um, I use taking the piss more, but that's more of a catchphrase, but, uh, or a phrase, but I, I'll say taking the piss or... Um, uh, I wish I, I would say proper, but uh, I don't have that uh, English twang to make it sound good. Um, yeah, I don't know. The thousands of comments we received, <laughs> some words showed up considerably more often than others. Which brings us on to this list. Is it Here the are C seven word? British English words that might, might be catching on in the United States. Oh, I say one. And we start the yeah. list with a relatively recent word in British. But I, I've said that so many times before. Uh... Yeah, well, from way back in the day. English, the word wonky in the sense of askew cropped up shortly after World War One. Indeed, I recall it being used frequently during my own life in Britain, which is not surprising given that I could never keep my glasses straight. And while the sure. turn of this century saw a rapid increase in the word's use in British English books, the same appears to be true in US markets. Largely, this spike may have been the result of books that originated outside of the Maybe. US, such as Craig Smith's The Wonky Donkey. I Oh, With the author sure. of that book being a New Zealander, <laughs> it's worth noting that some okay. British slang has long since caught on in other countries where English is a prominent language. Indeed, Melissa on Facebook noted, I had an Aussie <laughs> university <laughs> professor and on the first day said Thanks, something Melissa. was wonky and then dodgy. I've used both terms ever since. Nah. Perhaps the oldest word... I, I know of it. I just... Uh, mostly from Gordon Ramsay, but uh, no, nah, I, I, there there'd be no reason for me to say that on this list bloody <laughs> hell is so synonymous with british speak that it's almost become a parody of itself in fact during my time on the american stage a playwright once changed a line for me specifically so that it would read bloody hell instead of god damn it that's a oh, true well. story huh. the intensifier bloody is thought to have originated in the 17th century a once highly offensive swear word its impact really? has softened in recent decades to the extent that it was even referenced in those harold potter books Herald. indeed youtube commenter <laughs> andy Jones. 0522 chose bloody hell as his most used British phrase Thanks, because, A&D. quote, I blame Ron Weasley. And it seems he's not alone with instances of bloody hell skyrocketing in American English texts since the year 2000. Traders. In fact, responding on threads, Canadian comedian and most famous person I saw of no, Brent Butt, took things a step further and suggested... No offense, but I never heard of Brent Butt. <laughs> no offense. It f Hell. As ever, I proudly share those sentiments. Yeah. While both I don't countries it, use but... brilliant in its original sense, as in sparkling with light, British people. Oh, uh, I was going to say, British people use it more like uh, the way we use it. We say awesome. Or I guess it might be more of a West Coast thing. Awesome. 
dude. Ploy it to describe someone or something that is amazing, fantastic, the dog's bollocks. In America, I more often hear it specifically to describe somebody who's intelligent, which is why it's rarely used around me. That said, uh, I have encountered the occasional American who uses it the British really? way. Like, for example, Vicky on Twitter, who responded with brilliant, which I've been saying since I heard the 10th Doctor say oh, it. But God. even Doctor Who... I've never seen Doctor Who, and uh, I know this is kind of weird coming from a weeb and an anime fan, but um, I can't even get into Doctor Who. That's too much. It's too dorky. I'm already dorky enough. We would have a hard time unpacking the data on this, which is muddied by the fact that the word has several definitions. At the very least, the two-word phrase, that's brilliant, is found with increasing frequency in American English text since the start of the 21st century. Oh, Despite the occasional earlier <clears throat> use, gobsmacked really only burst onto the British scene in the early 80s, a bit like the Whisper Bar or a certain YouTube sensation. The Who brilliance does? of this word is that it physically <laughs> encapsulates what it describes. In other words, one's gob, as in mouth, is smacked, causing it to make an O shape. And something that left me gobsmacked was the sheer number of Americans who profess to use it. As ever, I'm more of a fan of Godsmack. <laughs> but its growing popularity among American Anglophiles owes much to books, film, and television. But according to Chris on Facebook, the term is also known among fans of another product of the early 80s, Warhammer. Oh. Despite Googling this, I'm still none the wiser as to what this entails or what a Warhammer is. Perhaps I'll be gobsmacked when I find out. Maybe. Either way, instances of gobsmacked in American English books have soared in recent years as British literature continues to make its way across the pond. Time will tell whether or not it will catch on with the wider population. Nah, not for me. It's not for me. Proper there. I go. heard it once said that British people use the word proper more times in a day than Americans do in a proper. lifetime. And the thing is, we don't just use it, we do so in a number of ways. At British organizations, proper can refer to the moral character of a prospective appointment and whether or not he or she passes the so-called fit and proper person test. Proper. It can be used as an intensifier similar in meaning to very or extremely. Yeah. As in, Lost in the Pond is a proper brilliant YouTube channel. Not my words. Okay. They are my words. It can also be used to describe <laughs> something as the genuine article. Arthur is a proper dog, isn't he? Yeah. And it appears to be this definition that Americans in my comments section have latched onto, with Cheryl on Facebook offering up proper, as in a proper city. However, despite the word cropping up numerous times on my social media feeds, it's actually seen a century of Aww, steady decline, not, not just in Britain, Keep it but around. America. Often, enthusiasm for British English among American Anglophiles is not shared among the wider American public. In hindsight, this might be one of those times. Chuffed. I don't often smile, but when I do, it's because my... I have never heard that before. Maybe it's pronounced cuffed, chuffed. I have never heard of that. Chuffed. My six-year-old niece drew this many pictures for my birthday. In Britain, we might say I was chuffed to bits. But yeah, chuffed to bits, or just it. simply chuffed, is another way of saying I'm really pleased right now. It is derived from the Northern English word chuff, which used to mean puffed with fat, but these days is a synonym for arse. Anyway, when I okay. use chuffed in the United States, my fellow Americans look at me as if yeah, I'm speaking anything other than English. However, among the American Anglophiles who make up a large portion <laughs> of my subscriber base, it seems to be catching on. Take, for example, YouTube commenter Rubricity, who told me, I recently cracked someone up when I said I was chuffed about something, but in an American accent. I'm going to be honest, uh, I would be very annoyed with that person. <laughs> it's like, stop trying to fit that word into everything. Which means, I what suppose, you, you were both chuffed about something. Once again, American readers have at least become more exposed to the word, with a sharp increase in instances since the end of the 20th century. <laughs> Sorted. Okay. Perhaps sort the word I was out, most surprised sorted. to see coming up again and again in your comments was the word sorted. Not because I didn't think it could catch on in America, but because it didn't occur to me that Americans don't already use it. Uh, and then really. I paused, stared off into the middle distance and realised Americans do use it, but only in the sense of organised. Mm. In Britain, it has one or two other meanings. In addition to the example I just used, Brits might say sorted when something has been resolved, as in the British transport police slogan, see it, say it, 
Sorted. Many may even be familiar with the English YouTube channel Sorted Food, who famously use the word <laughs> upon the completion of a recipe. Yeah, no and back when I were a lad, people in Grimsby even used it to mean brilliant. As in, the new chippy is proper sorted, mate. Even I'm confused at this point. Nonetheless, the word showed up countless times underneath my posts on Facebook, Twitter, threads, and YouTube. And if you're not following me on those platforms, sort that out now. No. Moreover, Sorted has featured in a significantly higher percentage of American English texts since Jeez, so hard to pause. I was just going to make sure I'm subscribed, okay. Since the end of the 1900s, <laughs> oh, with a fine example being Agent Alfie by, right. quote, the best-selling author of Doctor Who. If this list has taught me anything, it's that even recent British English words have the capacity to reach the United States. Sure. In fact, it could be argued that the internet has only increased this capacity, perhaps to a level not seen in more than a century. Specifically, my American subscribers often tell me that they picked up unique British phrases from pop cultural institutions like Doctor Who, Peaky yeah. Blinders, and of course, Harold <laughs> Potter. In my next video, I'll be looking at seven American words that might be catching on in Britain. In the meantime, if you've not seen my other vital list, six American things that are actually British, I insist you do that next. All right, I... Until the next video, goodbye. Hey, he does my cat. I don't have a dog. Ah, sorry. Didn't mean to do that. Go back. Go Hello, back I'm post. Lawrence, and I'm on a... That's how I end my videos, Lawrence. Lawrence. No, <laughs> uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, yeah, I, I, these are fun to do. I, I, I find them interesting. And um, yeah, uh, anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Please like you and subscribe you down below. It makes me feel good inside. helps out the channel. Uh, and if you got any suggestions, leave them in the comments. I will get to those. Um, uh, or you can call me a jerk. You can do that too. A lot of people do that. So, all right. Uh, thanks a lot. I really appreciate it and bye.